Education Secretary Gillian Keegan, who's here to talk A-levels. But before we go on to that, Gillian, I mean, there have been calls for an extra bank holiday if, if we win on Sunday. Would you push for that? Well, I mean, I think they've done an amazing job. I mean, really, I mean, not only this, this tournament, but also uh, the Euros uh, a couple of years ago as well. And they, they've, they've, they've just set alight women's football. But what they've done and, and their legacy, what they came in uh, actually already, they've been into Down Street a number of times and myself and Rishi have met with them, even played football with them. Um, but their legacy they wanted was to make sure that girls had equal access to all sports in schools. Uh, so that's one of the things that we announced as a result of, uh, of them uh, pushing for that actually, that we put £600 million extra into schools um, so that uh, girls could have equal access to sports. So if boys were playing football, the girls could. If boys were playing rugby, the girls could. Um, and I think that is a brilliant legacy, as well as the fact they've got pretty much every, you know, young girl sort of, uh, you know, saving up for football boots right now if they haven't already got them. So I think that's the legacy that they'd probably be interested so in. So no extra bank holiday? Well, that's not my decision, obviously, but uh, it's uh, it's something that I think that, that the more important thing would be to get lots more girls girls playing football as a result of this, so that we have the future Lionesses uh, always on tap. I mean, this team is obviously, there's a lot, a lot of new players uh, from, the, from the Euros. They're doing absolutely fantastically. And we want to make sure that we keep that winning team and winning formula. And that'll be by having that pipeline uh, very strong going forward. OK. Well, on to A-levels, which is what you're here to talk about. The grading system this year, it's returning back to what it was before COVID. It means a lot of students are, are, are going to be disappointed today with their grades. What do you say to them? Well, they shouldn't be disappointed. They have just done an amazing job. And really, they should be congratulating themselves. And I want to congratulate them because they've worked so hard. They have faced disruption. Uh, they have been the cohort that's gone through the pandemic and also uh, faced other disruption as well. Um, but it is really important that we, um, you know, have a grading system that holds its value. So that's why we wanted to make sure that uh, we had a good, a grading system that's that's well respected but they have done an amazing job they've proven their resilience they will get the grades and what the objective is it will go back equal to the 2019 system um, and the opportunities the other thing is they shouldn't worry the opportunities for them both in terms of university places and also other options that we've been working on such as um, high level apprenticeships and degree apprenticeships there's more opportunities than ever before so they'll get the equal access to uh, university etc there's the same number of places. Mm, but th there is an equal access for those in England and, and Wales and Scotland because students in w Wales and Northern Ireland were given advanced information about their exams. So it's not a level playing field. You know, somebody in, 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 in Northern Ireland who, who gets an A will have had more information than somebody in England who gets an A. They will have found it easier, and that's not fair, is it? Well, they're similar to our last year's system, so they have taken a bit longer. Um, but the reality is that those systems are different anyway. They're different um, exams, they're different qualification um, bodies, so there are different awarding bodies. So universities' admissions officers know the differences in these systems anyway. So they're quite sophisticated in understanding the difference between the English system, the Scottish system, and the Welsh system and the English system. So they are they are quite sophisticated at that. So they will know to, you know, to, to, to be able to calibrate for that. And to be fair, there's very few students from Wales and Northern Ireland when you compare them to the masses of students that are from England. But they will know enough to be able to calibrate that. This group of, of, of students getting their A-levels today, they've had COVID disruption, they weren't able to sit their GCSEs, they've had teacher strikes, they're now having their grades squeezed compared to last year. Is this the luckiest yet? The 2023. Well, I mean, obviously, you know, teacher assessed oh, grades were we put in place for a reason um, because, you know, there was such disruption with the pandemic um, and we did try a different system, but teacher assessed grades were seen to be uh, the best system. But what that did lead to, and we can all see that in the figures, is last year, I think, uh, or the year before, 45% um, of people got A's and A stars, which is, it's normally about 20, 20, 22, 23%, maybe 25%, but it's normally, you know, low 20s. So for the qualification to hold value, and these are actually internationally, both A-levels and GCSEs are internationally very highly regarded qualifications and very well uh, known and understood qualifications. For them to hold value, it's important that we got back to, you know, the, the right grading system. Everybody will calibrate, so they shouldn't worry. Um, one of the things I want also for them to know is every year, only one in five 
pupils actually gets their predicted grades and above. So everybody gets predicted grades and everybody normally, um, you know, one in five only get those predicted grades. They're, so they shouldn't be worrying about that. Their grades and their offers and they should, they've still got the same access to university. They should still have the same access either because of the offer they have or the firm uh, choice they have or uh, in the clearing system. But do you concede that they have been the unluckiest year? Well, I mean, I don't know. Everybody has a view on this. You know, I, I was talking to GCSE students this year who thought they were the unluckiest because they have got no teacher assessed grades and they're going to have to do exams all the time. You know, the reality is everybody has to just do the system that we have. It's really important. Exams are the fairest way of assessing people. Everybody does the same exam at the same time in the same conditions and gets the chance to show what they know. That is the fairest system. And, and, and actually, we've proven that as well by trying other systems. The fairest system is that system and I think it's really important that we these value these really valuable qualifications hold value but you know somebody asked me you know well what will people ask you in 10 years time they won't ask you anything about your A-level grades in 10 years time they'll ask you about other things you've done since then what you've done in the workplace what you did at university and then after a period of time they don't even ask you what you did at university it's really all about what you do and what you can demonstrate and the skills that you learn in the workplace so they're the things that get really important. But that's cold comfort for students today who don't get the grades that they were hoping for and don't go on to perhaps the university. Well they will before. still get the same access to university so if they got a B and went to university in 20 in 2019 then they'll get a B today hopefully and and you know they'll still get the same access to university so there won't be the same you know the whole grading system will be back to normal and so the universities will calibrate to that and in fact they already have done in their offers to some degree already taken that into account so we've worked with the universities so they understand it the admissions officers also with businesses so they understand it so everybody knows that these are different conditions than the teacher assessed grades and even last year which was part way between the two systems, more similar to what they've done in Northern Ireland and Wales. Are you worried about the, the, the disproportionate effect that it's having on, on, on poorer pupils, the effects of, of COVID and, and, and the knock-on effects? Lower grades, we know, uh, will disproportionately affect the most deprived because research shows that half of them haven't had access to things like catch-up lessons, where about a quarter of better-off kids have had access to these lessons. Are you worried there about the attainment gap for, for that cohort and, and the lifelong implications that could have. I'm worried about the attainment gap full stop. It's always something. It's the number one priority that we've always had. So since 2010 up to 2019, so pre the pandemic, we'd focused on closing the attainment gap and we'd actually closed it by 9.1%, which is the, the biggest sort of, you know, squeezing of that attainment gap, um, it, 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 probably in history. <clears throat> now that's been set back by the pandemic. So that is really a big concern. But one of the things that uh, probably you, maybe you didn't understand or people didn't really pick out was actually the teacher assess grades also um, didn't favour uh, disadvantaged students either. So they, they were sort of not valued or not given the same grades uh, as others and it's funny because I got 10 O-levels from a comprehensive school in Knowsley and I went back and said to a few teachers who are still around and said would any of you assess me of getting 10 O-levels they said no we would have said six maximum and so that was a factor I immediately understood it when I saw it in the figures then that actually you know teacher assess grades also have you know some some element of bias in them as well so I think it's really really important that we do focus on that and we do make sure that they get the catch-up which we put five billion pounds into helping catch up this cohort but the other thing I'm really concerned about is attendance so there are some groups who have not come back post the pandemic or haven't come back into a regular rhythm enough to be able to catch up so that's the big focus to make sure that we certainly use this September to say you know you'll do much better if you're in school for both your physical health your mental health your attainment and your lifelong um, opportunity school is where you will fare the best so come back into school and we'll help you back into school so there's a lot of effort going on to try and you know keep in touch with parents help people into school have a transition year we've I've been to a holiday and food uh, program where they were having some kids who hadn't actually been in school for a while to try and lower the barriers so they were ready for September a lot of activities going on to try and get uh, the most disadvantaged children back into the school system where we can make sure they get a fantastic education. I mean, the fact that, that over last year a quarter of secondary school pupils were off school for more than a month, I mean, some would say that that's a, a massive failure already. How have you let it get to that point? Well, I think what happened, there's a number of things, but one of the things is people got out of the habit, uh, some, some families got out of the habit of going to school 
others. Um, there's a lot of those children with special educational needs as well. They feel that they're kind of behind already. They've got anxiety. Some of them have mental health issues. It's not the same kind of absence that we would have had potentially before the pandemic. It's a lot more complex. So that's why we've been working with attendance mentors, with attendance team leaders within local authorities to really to get in touch with the families and try and remove the barriers that they see. You know, you know what it's like if you get left behind, if you feel like you're behind. It only gets worse if you don't get into school. So how do we help those children catch up? How do we help Help them to, um, you know, to, to have that sort of runway into school so they can be feel more comfortable back in school. How do we get them the support they need if they need additional support? So it's really much more looking at trying to resolve the issues and working with the parents to say, look, you know, you may have got used to your child being at home and, you know, maybe you were at home as well during the pandemic, but it really is much, much better for them if they're in school. But it is more complex, um, but we do have a lot of activity. It is the thing that probably worries me uh, the most. OK, Education Secretary Gillian Keegan, thanks very much. Join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the TAO Media family. Please like and share TAO Media. We love you all. Please support TAO Media Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.